Efendim İngiliz parlamentosunda iki dönem milletvekilliği yapmış ve yeni seçimlerde de adaylığını koyan eski milletvekillerinden John Ryan yaptığı başarılı çalışmalardan dolayı adım adım Londra ofis ve stüdyolarını ziyaret etti. Haber koordinatörümüz Osman Tango'nun konuğu olan John Ryan'ın açıklamalarını getiriyoruz şimdi huzurlarınızda. Evet e, sevgili izleyiciler e, adım adım Londra programından ben Osman Tango. Bugün değişik bir formatta sizlerle buluşuyoruz. E, burada bugün çok değerli bir misafirimiz vardır. Bu misafirimizi size özetle tanıştıracağım. Misafirimizin adı John Ryan'dır. John Ryan kimdir? Bir ona bakalım. Burada notlarım vardır ve bu notlarla sizlere John Ryan'ın nereden ne olduğunu anlatacağım. Efendim John Ryan 3 dönem milletvekili yaptı. Hükümet sözcüsü yaptı 6 dönem. Home Office Ministeri yani e, İçişleri Bakanlığı'nda yaptı ve en son e, Başbakan e, Gordon Brown'un döneminde de Kıbrıs İşleri'nden sorumlu bakanlık yaptı. E, şimdi ise e, genel seçimler geliyor. Genel seçimler e, 2015 Mayıs ayında e, olacaktır. E, John da adaydır. Bu konuyu da kendisine soracağız. 2014 Mayıs belediye seçimleri olur, ara seçimler. Ee, aynı gün Avrupa Parlamentosu seçimi olur. 2015'te ise Mayıs'ta genel seçim olur. Yani önümüzdeki yıllarda İngiltere'de siyaset çok ısınacaktır. Çok konuşulacak bir noktada olacaktır. Efendim e, şimdi e, John Ryan'a dönüp e, sorular sormak isterim. Birkaç soru konuğumuz olduğu için önce teşekkür ederim. E, John, thank you very much for accept our invitation and you come to our studio. Um, I will ask you, I just said uh, in Turkish, I have to explain to you this slowly, slowly. I explain it to our people where you've been, what you've been doing. You was free term, I believe, and peace and uh, some ministerial job and so on. Mm -hmm. So now, and you are, uh, you are a candidate again in 2015 to become uh, MP. Hopefully you will. Anyway, uh, my question is, uh, first will we start with the, with the Turkish Cypriot community in England, in London. Um, the question I want to ask you, the Turkish Cypriot is a minority community, where do they fit into this system in, in England, uh, in social life, in business space or in politics, uh, where they are? Can you Uh, explaining to me, uh, can I have your opinion to uh, to say what, where they are and how they doing? You can, and thank you very much for uh, that warm welcome. I think I would um, say about the Turkish Cypriot community that they have themselves worked really hard to integrate without forgetting their heritage and their identity. They have really committed to this society, to this economy, to this world here in the UK where they live. And I think um, they're a very positive community, a very entrepreneurial community, uh, a very hard working community. And I think they have the same aspirations as the wider community. And that is that they They want to live a decent life. They want to be able to get on in life. They want their children to do well. They want their children to do better than they did, which is what most parents want for their children. They want to have a decent home to live in, and they want to have a job. They want to have good health care when <coughs> they need it. And I think these are the, the basics that people look for um, in their community and from their government and from their public services. And I don't see any difference between Turkish Cypriot community and the wider community in terms of those aspirations for being able to live a good life and they're willing to work hard for that good life. They're not asking anybody to hand it to them on a plate. They make a full commitment to the community in which they live. Ee, sorunun cevabı e, özet olarak şunu söylüyor. 
e, Kıbrıslı Türkler buralarda diyor e, iyi, iyi başarılıdırlar e, buralarda çalışıyorlar gelecekleri için kendilerinin ve sadece çocuklarının e, geleceği için uğraşırlar ve iyi e, mücadele eden çalışkan bir toplumdurlar diyor. Başka toplumlara mukayese edildiğinde e, çok iyi bir yerlere geldiler. Eğitimde e, eğitimin de sağlıkta bu konularda da e, bilgilendirilirler. Onlar da gayret ediyor. Do you think John e, do they need to uh, put more effort into the uh, A political way or to make their voice heard or what do they what what is what do you recommend them to be well the reason I say um, you know that they have integrated is because over the last um, certainly 15 years possibly 20 years but certainly during the period of time I was an MP we saw some quite big changes where um, Turkish Cypriot members of the community joined political parties, became local councillors, um, indeed your own daughter, uh, yeah, my you. good friend Alim Kazimoglu, she is a leading councillor here in Enfield. Um, so the community has integrated in that way. It would be, um, you know, we would want to look for more members of the community getting involved and also um, more members of the community just making sure that they're registered to vote, that they go out in, and vote, because that's your voice. Yeah. And the problem, <coughs> well, it's a surprise. I, I, I mean, I'm always surprised if there is an issue about um, registration, for instance, or getting involved in politics, because one of the things I think is a very strong uh, hallmark of the Turkish Cypriot community is Um, they are a community. It isn't just about themselves. It's not, I'm all right, Jack. I don't care about anybody else. They have a real sense of it's not just about me, it's not just about my family, but it's about my neighbours too. Okay. And that, you know, when, when you're um, bringing up your children to take part in the wider world, you're teaching them those values that if it's in it's all right to look after your own self-interest as long as it's also in the wider interest of the community. And I always think with the Turkish Cypriot community, they have a very strong sense of community. So it's very important that they continue on this path of getting okay. more involved in British politics and having a stronger voice. Okay. E, John Dayan'a sorduğum soru Kıbrıs Türkleri neredeler, ne yapıyorlar, ne yapmalı gerekir? Önerisi ne? John Dayan da benim milletvekili olduğum dönemde e, çok büyük farklılıklar oldu. Kıbrıslı Türkler de yor, e, den bir sürü e, şey e, belediye meclis üyeleri oldu, aktif diller, çalışırlar diyor. Fakat bu yeterli mi? Daha geniş olmalı, daha da çünkü diyor e, çocuklarını da e, teşvik etmeliler diyor ve e, özellikle de o seçim günlerinde e, gidip e, sandık başında oylamaları gerekir. Yani oturup kalır. Çünkü Kıbrıs Türk'ü e, diyor, e, Kıbrıs Türkler burada diyor sadece kendileri için böyle bir toplum, sadece kendileri için değil komşuları için de uğraş verirler ve bu bu da, daha geniş boyuta yayılmalıdır diyor. Yes. Right, um, you was a, a, a, a in charge of um, Cyprus Special Envoy. You was a, a Cyprus Special Envoy as well uh, for Cyprus when Gordon Brown was a Prime Minister when the Labour government was in power. And can you tell me a bit more about this? Your when you Special Envoy to Cyprus, uh, what is uh, what, what you have been doing? What have you done? What is your uh, view about uh, the situation. Um, okay, şimdi dedim ki siz e, Kıbrıs işlerinden sorumlu bir e, bakanlık yaptınız ve Kıbrıs'a da gidip gel geliyordunuz. Ne gördünüz bu gidiş dön geliş dönemlerinizde? Durumu nasıl değerlendirirsiniz? Okay, what you see when you went to Cyprus, when you was a special envoy for Cyprus? And who did you meet in Cyprus? Did you meet the politician? Have you met the people in the street? What did you do when you went to Cyprus? <gülüyor> well, first of all, It was a huge privilege to be asked to be special representative to Cyprus, um, and I think it's a, you know, a, a very important issue um, 
for the people of Cyprus themselves. Um, but Britain is a guarantor power and has a special responsibility, therefore, to do all that it can to assist and facilitate in the resolution um, of the, the problem and the division of the island, which is now 40, 40 years. I think it would be a tremendous thing if that could be resolved. Um, I think uh, my approach was very much that um, a solution we were working on the base of a bi-zonal, bi-communal solution, um, that the solution must come from the people of Cyprus for the people of Cyprus, that our responsibility was to assist, to help, to facilitate in every way that we were asked to, in every way that we could. Okay. I met politicians on either side of the divide and community leaders. Um, we did a lot of work with civil society groups. I worked with the Foreign Office um, and with the High Commission in Cyprus. I um, worked with uh, members of the Greek government, um, members of the Turkish government, because they too um, are guarantor powers. Um, and we were trying very hard to facilitate um, talks. And I think um, the success of that um, initiative was that um, the UN Secretary General upgraded the talks and appointed his own special representative, Alexander Downer, um, to facilitate those talks. I don't claim a greater success than that, but um, and that was achieved with many other people, not least the people. So Britannia should be more active in this negotiation, you think, or you should? You just said in your words they should, they should leave it to the uh, to uh, the no, Cypriots I'm not to leave it to but, them. But uh, Mr. Oh. Anastasiadis, uh, the president of the Greek side, he he. He wrote a letter to the mm. uh, European Union and he asked them to, to send a representative mm. for the negotiations. Mm. But the donor, he said that they, they is not going to help. So mm. uh, how, how are they going to do mm. it in between? Mm. Mm. And uh, you said... Uh, uh, I don't think it's for um, anybody from outside to impose a solution on uh, the people in Cyprus, although the, the, the, the two major communities there. Okay, like that, let me, that, uh, that, that um, <coughs> isn't going to, because you can have any number of solutions, but unless you have a solution that's actually got the support of the people, it won't work. Okay, so in another word, they should leave the two communities in Cyprus to, to negotiate to find a settlement. Well, no. But in the meantime, no. the, uh, Britain is a guarantor of that country. He's got his own bases there. Turkey is a guarantor and Greece. So, uh, what do you think? They should never involve, or they should involve no, at I the beginning, or they should stay at the last. Uh, let me explain into this in Turkish few words again for our. Uh, well, I don't people. say that they should just leave them, leave the Cypriot community to it. That's not what I'm saying. But we'll, we'll come back to that now. Okay. Uh, bana diyor Kıbrıs senden sorumlu görevi verdikleri ne diyor? E, çok memnun oldum diyor. Ee, ve e, Kıb konumundan dolayı da Kıbrıs'a gittim. Ee, Kıbrıs'ta, Güney Kıbrıs'taki liderlerle görüştüm. Kuzey Kıbrıs'taki liderlerle görüştüm. Türkiye'deki e, hükümetle de görüştüm bu o dönemlerde. Fakat çok kısa bir süre kaldığım için çok bir şey yapacağımı tahmin etmiyorum. Ben e, bu diyor ki e, Kıbrıslılar aralarında görüşüp çözmeleri gereken e, gereken bir konudur. Ama ben de dedim ki peki öyle ama e, Sayın Anastasiyadis Birleşmiş Milletler'e mektup gönderdi ve diyor ki bu görüşmelerde bir de onlardan gözlemci olsun o da katkıda olacaktır diye. E, o zaman e, ve a, Mr. Downer da bunu e, gereksiz olduğunu söyledi. İşi daha fazla zorlaştıracağını söyledi. Onu da sordum. O da diyor ki ben demek istemedim yani tek başlarına yapsınlar. Tabii ki yardımcı da olmaları gerekir. Okay, carry on. Uh, well, I just think let's um, let's look at um, you know when we talk about guarantor powers, 
that could just be a label, but actually it's a responsibility. And it's a responsibility for Britain, in particular, born of its history with the island of Cyprus. And it's a responsibility that each successive government has to take very seriously. But let's compare it but to... But you think they should, the, the EU should involve this well? Well... Um, the United you know, Cyprus, Nations already, they, got, they all agree on their basis, and they are uh, two leaders, they, they are negotiating, or they're trying to negotiate. Uh, do you think uh, the European Union, uh, they should involve in direct into the negotiations, or it should do? I think it'll only, you know, you've got the UN in there, and yes. you've got um, the uh, Greek Cypriots and the Turkish Cypriots. It's only going to work with the EU if both sides want them in there. Um, I don't say they should or shouldn't be in there. What I would say is this. When you're looking at an issue like this, let's think about Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland, um, we only got that huge move forward towards peace because the North and the South agreed and the different sides in Northern Ireland itself agreed. In a sense, you know, the Republic of Ireland is a separate country. You, there's the government of Britain, and then there was also people like Bill Clinton helping. It wouldn't matter what any of them said, Tony Blair, Bill Clinton, or the Republic of Ireland, if the people in Northern Ireland hadn't come together and agreed a way forward. They wouldn't become a peace. But it wouldn't be any kind of a lasting peace. However, you couldn't have said, so we'll just leave them to it. The government of the UK had a very, very clear responsibility, and still does. Um, the Republic of Ireland, it's their, most, their closest neighbour. We could not say they didn't have. We didn't have a need for them to be involved. And, of course, um, Bill Clinton was welcomed there and yeah, the American well. administration. These people came in and they made a significant difference in helping the two sides find Who did a lasting came and peace. Help to make peace, Bill Clinton. But in the Cyprus situation is different. You got the United Nations, then you got the EU, then you got the Britain as a guarantor, then you got Turkey, you got okay, Greece. Well. So if they all gonna involve but, but at the beginning you said Northern Ireland In Northern Ireland you had two the community they decide you had the Republic of Ireland, you had other people like the American um, president so what they I'm help. saying, uh, what I'm saying is, some people, some countries have a very specific responsibility in okay. relation to Cyprus, okay. but they have to work with the Cypriot people. They can't impose what they might think is a good solution. They have to assist and facilitate, and accept that they have this responsibility to stick with Cyprus and find a solution with the Cypriot um, people and with the Cypriot representatives. And it has to be a solution that all sides in Cyprus can accept, can find consensus around, because that way we'll build a lasting peace. But if anybody thinks they can go in and impose a solution, then they're wrong, okay. it won't work, okay. and you only get peace and a way forward through negotiation. Okay. But no, I don't say they should stand back and leave them to it. But I think the guarantor powers have to understand their role and that the primary role and the primary decision belongs with Cypriots. The guarantor powers have a responsibility to support, facilitate, assist and stick with Cyprus until we f that solution is found. Okay. Ee, sorum e, e, şeydi e, Kıbrıs ayıydı biraz önce izah ettim şunu diyor e, İrlanda'da diyor e, iki taraf Kuzey ve Güney e, Ayland diyor İrlanda diyor oturdular diyor ve konuştular diyor ve Bill Clinton da o zaman e, Amerika'nın yardımcı oldu ve bitti. şimdi Kıbrıs'a gelince ben inanırım diyor iki taraf Kıbrıs'a iki taraf da oturup konuşmaları gerekir anlat birbirine ee, yani bu sorunu onların çözmesi gerekir diyor. Ama diyor İngiltere'nin de garantör devlet olarak tabii ki yardımcı ben tek başlarına bırakın demiyorum yardımcı olmaları gerekir onların da görevidir diyor. Okay. And what I would say about the European Union 
At the time I was special representative, we always said that Cyprus joining the EU was a very positive move because it, it, it, one of the reasons is it provided, we felt, a context within which a solution could be sought and that that would be a positive context. So I understand why anybody might look to the EU um, to support, but um, I think you know, Alexander Downer is the special representative for the Secretary General of the United Nations and he's working there on the ground with both sides and, and that must continue. Ben diyor inanırım diyor Avrupa Birliği'ne üye olması Kıbrıs'ın diyor iyi, bir, iyi, iyi bir doğru bir adımıdır diyor. Ee, onun için diyor Alexander da onlar da orada Birleşik Devletler'in ve But uh, you said it's a good move when they become a, a, a full member of EU Cyprus but unfortunately physically it didn't work out in the North Cyprus. Uh, the, the system only works on, on the Greek side. So that means it didn't help the, uh, the whole Cyprus community to have the beneficial of the EU. But the but minister, uh, the president of the Greeks is saying he wants a representative in the, in the negotiations. But the Turkish Cypriot, they think um, it's not going to be helpful because uh, they, they, they, it's more people involved in the, uh, the in the negotiation. Everyone's opinion is different. But at the beginning, you did say, end of the day, it's the uh, Cypriots, they should find it and they should help them. Yeah. And they, they have to agree about who is helping and to what degree they can help. That is certainly the case. And, and you know, one of the big advantages for um, the Turkish Cypriot community when a, when, when a solution is forthcoming is that they will then get the full benefit of being European Union members. Although, given them um, some of the difficulties that um, I've experienced lately, maybe... maybe yeah, <laughs> OK, but if you're a member of Cyprus, it will be better for the Cyprus Cypriot. I think there's a lot, lot of people in Cyprus on either side of that green line suffer because there isn't a solution and I have suffered for 40 years. But the Greek Cypriot, the, the, the Greek Cypriot they're not suffering much as Turkish Cypriot because the Greek Cypriot, they can, uh, they, they, they're not living under embargoes, they can do anything uh, they, they like in the, with the whole world. Uh, but the Turkish Cypriot, uh, I think they've been uh, suffer most because, as you know, you can't, you, they can't fly direct, they can't send their letters direct, they can't do their people. So I don't think I don't they, think they, they will be fair, fair, fair. I don't think anyone could The try. EU, it didn't do any good to them. You know, it, it already promised Well, that. I don't think it didn't do any good because there have been infrastructure projects uh, uh, and other things that have helped. But um, certainly we, we know that if a solution could be found, it would be of great benefit to, yeah. to the Turkish yeah. Cypriots and to all Cypriots. And, you know, I think people on either side of the Green Line have suffered, maybe in different ways, but they have suffered. Okay. And everybody stands to gain from a solution that brings a lasting peace. İnanırım diyor iki taraf bir barış olur, bir anlaşma olursa iki taraf için daha iyi olacak. Çünkü hem güneyde hem kuzeyde Kıbrıslılar bu olaydan zarar görür. Barış olursa iki taraf için de iyi olacak. But I ask you one more question. John Ryan, do you think in 2000 and well by end of May or March uh, in May? May. Do you think there's going to be a solution, an agreement? Because they didn't even get together to the same table to talk. If for the, the Greek Cypriot, they want to put some condition down. The Turkey, uh, Turkish uh, leader, uh, Mr. Uh, Derisharoğlu, he's saying, uh, you know, we have to talk all the issues. They want the Tamagusta part of Marash, they call it. They want that before they get to the negotiation table. It's a bit the, uh, the disagreement in between. So they can't even get round to table to talk. Do you think it's going to be a solution in 2014? Well, if it was easy, it would have been solved long ago. We know it's, it, it's difficult. Um, I can't say whether it would be resolved by May um, um, in that time scale. We'd all very much hope so. What I would say is, I always, you know, I it, it's not optimism, but I feel positive that a solution will be found because from working with 
people on the island of Cyprus. Greek Cypriot, Turkish Cypriots, others, Armenian, Maronite, from working with people on the island, um, I am convinced of one thing. Everybody wants a solution and wants a lasting peace. But everybody wants a solution the way you suit them. So how is it going to be a solution? Well, it will only come through a negotiated settlement and okay. agreement and consensus. And no matter how much anybody would, would say it should be this, it should be that, unless the Cypriot people themselves agree to it, it wouldn't be a lasting solution anyway. Um, as long as they're talking, even if they're not always agreeing, there's hope. And if you look around the world, uh, all the situations where we've had divided cities, divided countries, civil wars, um, ultimately, things move forward. We saw the Berlin Wall come down, nobody thought it would. We saw Northern Ireland find peace. And we've got situations now of terrible strife where ways forward have to be found. I am convinced that there is a solution for Cyprus, there is a way forward, and the greatest strength they've got is their people, that they want that solution. And as long as they're talking, there is hope, and we must support that, those talks. Ben, John Ryan'a sordum, e, sizce Mayıs'ta 2014 yılında e, barış anlaşma olacak mı sordum. Diyor, o kadar kolay bir sorun değil. Ben Mayıs ayında bu sorunun biteceğini, anlaşmaya olacağına e, ümit istiyorum ama inanmıyorum olacağını. Ama bakıyoruz dünyada diyor, İrlanda'da, Almanya'da duvarlar yıkıldı ve insanlar birleşti ve e, barış içinde yaşıyorlar. Dolayısıyla Kıbrıs'a da Kıbrıs'ta da bir barış ol, o, o, olacak diyor ve bu, bu barış sadece ama ben dedim ki e peki ma, e, onlar farklı istiyor, ötekileri farklı istiyor. İki tarafın da farklı görüşleri vardır. Nasıl olacak? E, konuşarak masa başında o, olacak bunlar dedi. E, I think we come end of our uh, time which they be given to us. Um, even we passed a little bit. Uh, all I'm saying, we uh, we wish you uh, very best of luck in the general election and your party. Hopefully, we see you MP again, and hopefully, you go and visit Cyprus and try to um, help the two community to become a, to to solve out the Cyprus problem. And uh, thank you very much for coming, and I will let you to do to say the final wording and then we close the program. Uh, geldiği için teşekkür ederim. İnşallah başarılı olursunuz diyorum. E, genel seçimlerde ve bir gün yine Kıbrıs'a giden ve bu iki topluma da e, barış için, anlaşma, bir anlaşma için e, yardımcı olun derim ve son sözlerimi veriyorum. Yes John, what do you have to tell the Turkish Cypriot community? What is your message for the Turkish Cypriot community in your constituency? What do you want to say? Them? What is your message you give? They are an important community uh, in my constituency and I want to work with them to make sure we improve life for everybody in Enfield and to make sure that their aspirations for themselves, for their children and their grandchildren and for their community are met, that together we work together to ensure that we do change the world, that's what politicians are for, to change the world for the better, to make it a better place for our elderly people, for our young people, for everybody. And we can only do that if we work together. Nobody can do that on their own. And my commitment is to do my very, very best to work as hard as I possibly can with the communities to be their voice, to speak up for them, to work hard to ensure that everything they need I go out and fight for. Okay. Son sözleri şöyle oldu. Ben diyor benim bölgemde olan toplum için diyor Kıbrıs Türkler için diyor birlikte çalışırsak diyor daha iyi günler daha iyi gelecek yapabiliyoruz diyor. Ben diyor seçilirsem diyor millet yolunda. Bunun sözünü veririm diyor. Kendilerinin sesini, kendilerinin haklarını duyurabilmeleri için gayret edeceğim. Onun sözünü veriyorum. 
Okay, thank you very much, Anwar. Thank you. Thanks for coming to our it's studio. My pleasure. Hopefully, thank we you. we we have you as a guest in future again when the elections comes or before that. You welcome anytime you want to come to visit us in our studio. I'd be delighted. Thank, thank you. you. Sevgili izleyiciler, bugün de ki programımızın sonuna geldik. Efendim, e, ileriki tarihlerde inşallah başka bir siyasetçi ile ya başka bir milletvekili adayı veya milletvekili ile bu stüdyolardan sizlere e, konuşuruz, sizlere sesleniriz. Bizim amacımız burada Kıbrıs Türklerinin yaşadığı bu ülkede ne yapmaları lazım, nerelere gitmeleri lazım e, ve e, buradaki siyasetçilerin, politikacıların görevi de e, bize konuşup e, anlatmaları lazım e, gerekiyor. Ve nasıl entegre oluruz, nasıl bu ülkenin yasalarından, yasa, ya, sisteminden yararlıyız. Onları anlattı bize John. Çok çok teşekkür ederiz. Ee, tekrar görüşmek üzere. Ben Osman Tanbu, Adım Adım Londra'da ekibinden. Hepinize iyi günler diliyorum efendim. Adım Adım Londra, Kıbrıs Türkü'nün sesi. Var olduysa yaşayacak. Cyprus Turkish Times ve Kanal T işbirliği çerçevesinde İngiltere'de yılın en iyileri 17 Kasım 2013 Pazar günü muhteşem bir gala ile ödüllerine kavuşuyor. Türkiye sahnelerinin dev isimlerinden Safiye Soyman'ın yanı sıra Londra sahnelerinin sevilen isimlerinden Gamze Akın, Burçin, Akın Zabit ve Babutsa grubundan Ali Sönmez yılın en iyileri galasında sizlere unutamayacağınız bir gece yaşatacaklar. Siyasetten sanata, müzikten eğitime, spordan iş dünyasına kadar birçok alanda ödül alacak isimler sizlerin oylarıyla belirlenecek. www.cyprusturkishtimes.com adresinden oylarınızı atarak yılın en iyilerini belirleyin. Geceye katılmak için irtibat telefonlarımız 0771 556 62 12 ve 07831 95 80 80. Kıbrıs Türkü'nün Sesi Adım Adım Londra programı olarak bu hafta da bize ayrılan sürenin sonuna geldik. Önümüzdeki hafta yine İngiltere'den birbirinden özel görüntüler ve çarpıcı röportajların yer aldığı yepyeni bir Adım Adım Londra programında buluşuncaya dek. Ben sunucunuz Neslihan Altunç, yayında ve yapımda emeği geçen tüm arkadaşlarım adına mutlu, huzurlu ama her zamanki gibi her şeyden önemlisi sağlıklı bir hafta geçirmenizi diliyorum. Hoşçakalın. Noyanlar Şirketler Grubu'nun sunduğu Adım Adım Londra programını izlediniz. Adım Adım Londra Kah orada kah burada En uzaklarda Siz neredeyseniz Adım Adım Londra Orada Paylaşmak adına Kah orada kah burada Hayata dair Özlediğiniz her şey burada Adım adım Londra